about our lesson this morning. Let's put our hands together, eyes closed. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you for keeping watch over us throughout this year. Father, accept our thanks and praises. Thank you for another Christmas. Thank you for our teachers. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for everyone, oh Lord, who have helped us this year. Father, accept our thanks and praises. We want to learn our lesson this morning. Come and open our understanding. Come and plant all these words on the fleshy table of our hearts. And in the end, take us to heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good morning, children. Happy Sunday and Merry Christmas. You are welcome to our Sunday school this morning. We thank God for another Christmas. Glory be to God. The title of our lesson today is Journey's End. And the memory verse is When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. And our text is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. But we are going to be reading a few verses. Verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. 3. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Children, imagine, King Herod and all Jerusalem were troubled on hearing of the birth of Christ. And we are happy, and we are celebrating the birth of Christ. Glory be to God. Verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And, they, and when they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, twelve. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Let's put our Bibles together and listen to our lesson. Children, you might be wondering why I have these gifts. Today, we are going to be talking about the very first Christmas gifts. For the past three weeks, we have been learning about stories around the birth of Jesus. We have learned of the visit of the angel to Mary, the birth of Jesus, the visit of the shepherds, and today we are going to learn about the wise men. Who are the wise men? The wise men are those who studied about stars. They are also called the Magi or kings. These are very rich men. These are the wise men. Can you see from their dressing that they are very rich people? One night, they saw a star. They said to themselves, this star is different from all the stars we have ever seen. It's so brilliant and so beautiful. A king had been born. We need to follow it. Do you think they had a roadmap or sat nav? No. They followed this special star. They didn't mind the hot desert sand or the sloppy hills. They determined that they must find the newborn king. 
the first place they went to in Jerusalem was the king palace. But baby Jesus was not there. When they asked King Herod about the newborn king, he was surprised. He asked the scribes and the priests if they knew anything about the newborn king. Then they told him that yes, there had been a prophecy that a king will be born. And he will be born in Bethlehem of Judea. So King Herod told the wise men that they should go and find this newborn babe. And when they have found him, they should come back and tell him so that he too will go and worship him. The wise men continued to follow the star and it led them to a little village called Bethlehem. The star stopped. It wasn't a castle or a royal palace. It was a little house where the star led them. They knocked on the door and when Joseph opened the door, they explained why they came. When they saw Jesus, they were very happy. They knelt down and worshipped him. Then they presented him with gifts. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Then, as they returned, the angel of the Lord appeared to them in a dream and told them not to return to King Herod again. So they returned to their own country by another way. The wise men followed the star to baby Jesus and they found him. God led and directed them. And he will lead and guide us too if we follow Jesus, who is the light of the world. The wise men presented Jesus with gifts. We too can give Jesus our hearts by telling him we are sorry for all the things we have done, all the bad things we have done, and promising him we will never do them again. Jesus will come into our hearts and change our hearts and we will not be able to do all those bad things anymore. The statement of our lesson is follow the star. Before we end our lesson, I would like to teach you a song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, leading wise men from afar to the place where Jesus lay on the first black Christmas day. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, leading wise men from afar. This is where we end our lesson. Activities for ages 2 to 5 is follow the star. Follow through the maze to help the wise men find baby Jesus. And for ages 6 to 8, to find the newborn king. Fill in the missing words in the sentence, then write the words in the crossword puzzle. Our next week lesson is Lesson 4E, titled God Protects His Child. And the memory verse is Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. See you next week. God bless you. Bye. Good morning, answer class. You are welcome to Sunday school this morning. Our lesson is why can't Christmas last forever? What a question. I'm sure we are going to get an answer. Uh, part of our reading is going to come from John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This is just part of our reading. We are going to read other scriptures as we go on. So our lesson is about a question that Zach was just wondering. Why is it that Christmas doesn't last forever? I'm sure you agree with me that it's not everything that lasts forever. For example, when you were babies, you know, you used to wear tiny socks, tiny little hearts with cute hands, cute fingers and legs. But now you have grown up, isn't it? You have grown up now. You can't wear those things. Neither can you eat baby food or milk for babies because you couldn't remain babies forever. Even when we celebrate birthdays, sometimes you just feel like, oh, how I wish the whole year was my birthday. But it can't. It can't stay forever. Many things cannot stay forever. But guess what? Jesus lasts forever. Only Jesus lasts forever. Because Jesus is the Son of God. He was there from the beginning. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He's the only one who can live forever. He's the real Christmas that stays forever. Not all these, um, these decorations, you know, we only put them up in December, uh, the nice turkeys or chicken or rice or potatoes, I don't know what you eat where you are. All the sweets, the gifts, we all like the feel of it. Gifts all around, glittering things all around, but it can't stay forever. But Jesus, the Son of God, lives forever. We are going to use scriptures to prove why we say Jesus lives forever. From the very first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1 verse 1, when we read, in the beginning God, Jesus was there. You remember the other lesson where we learned that Jesus is part of the Godhead. So he was there in the creation. He created this whole world. So he was there from the beginning. Even in the uh, John chapter 1 that we read, verse 1, in the beginning was the word. Jesus is the word of God. And when Jesus came, you remember in John, many times he was saying, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am Alpha and Omega, the door of the sheep, the good shepherd. So many things. He said, I am, I am. Many prophets have prophesied about him well before he was born. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus 700 years before he was born. He prophesied that a son was to be born. He was to be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. He taking note of that Everlasting Father which means he lives forever and ever, the Prince of Peace. And his kingdom was going to be forever and ever. And it's not only Isaiah who spoke about him, you know. Over 60 prophecies spoke about his birth, his coming, the nature of his kingdom. And then many, many years after that, we come to the famous story of Christmas when Jesus was born in a manger. Most of you, you were born in nice hospitals, nice beds, court beds. But for Jesus, he was born in a manger. Why? So that 
he can fulfill his purpose to be the redeeming Lamb of God. So he had to be in the form of a human being so that his blood could be used to sacrifice for all our sins. That's why Jesus had to be born. And this, this is the part that we are so excited that, oh, Jesus was born Christmas, Christmas, but he has always been there. Well before the major experience, Jesus was always there. Because Jesus is the Son of God, which is the key statement of this, this lesson. Jesus is the Son of God. He showed us how to live. He taught us so many sermons. You remember the Sermon on the Mount? You remember the parables? The parable of the sower? So many parables that he told us. He performed so many miracles. Turning water into wine. Raising Lazarus. All those things so that we can know the nature of his power. And then it lasts. When all was done, when it was time up for him to be sacrificed for our sins, he was crucified. He died for our sins. And after three days, something exciting happened. He resurrected because he lives forever. And after comforting his disciples, explaining everything that had happened, he actually went to heaven and they saw him going there. He, they saw him with their eyes and he was taken up by the cloud into the heavens and he said he was going to come back. He's going to come back the first time. It's going to be sudden, which is the rapture of the saints. We are waiting for him. And then he will be revealed again. And then he will come and reign for a thousand years again. And then those who, be, who will be on the side of Jesus, those who are saved, who will live with him forever. And we have evidence, even right now, that he lives forever. That he is with us right now. Because he's still saving souls, even today. Today, if you are going to be honest with yourself and say, Jesus, I have sinned in my life. Forgive me. He's going to save you. He's still healing. If you are not well, you can ask him. Aren't you excited that we serve a Savior who is living? For our activity is very exciting. All you need to do is get your Bible, get your pen, write down all the names that refer to Jesus. So you write the name and you write the scripture. Whosoever is going to write the longest list is going to get a special Christmas present. Please remember to send your finished list to the email below. That's the end of our lesson, but before we go, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our lesson. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us that you live forever and you are the Son of God. We just pray, mighty God, that you bless all these children who have listened to this lesson. Help them to know that you are ever there with them and you will ever be with them forever and ever. Bless the primary, uh, uh, primary power students as well and help them to remember their lesson Continue to bless us. Give us a wonderful time this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.